Welcome back to another edition of Sound the Sirens. I'm your host, Thomas Ornis, and today we're talking about the preview to West Virginia. Um, about to head to, head that way, actually, a couple yeah. hours from now. Got your, you, got, you have to buy a banjo on the way, right, yep. if you're going to fit in in Morgantown? Yeah, Barry. Grow, uh, grow a beard in the next 24 hours? Yeah, Barry's not bringing, I'm not, I'm not sure if Barry's bringing his uh, mattress on top of the <laughs> car or not. Like, last time I went on a road trip with him, but, yeah, it'll be, it's a... Uh, so Matt, like looking at West Virginia, they're a very like uh, up and down team to say the least. Uh, they lost a, I looked up, they lost to Maryland. And yeah, they, and then a couple weeks later, they Iowa put like fifty five up on Maryland on the road. So, and they also lost to Baylor by twenty. And uh, and Daner beat Oklahoma. Ba- yeah, ba- so I don't really know what like to, what it will be interesting to see what West Virginia team we see, and especially being on the road, it's. A tough hostile crowd, but looking Texas Tech won at West Virginia. Yeah. And uh they just Texas Tech just fired their head coach this yeah. week. So it's uh yeah, uh, I don't really know what to think of it. I remember West Virginia last year wasn't very impressed. We were also at our very peak of just rolling through the Big Twelve last year with them being the last last uh, game of the year. It was in this December, it was a couple days after my birthday because like before looking at that game during the off season, I'm like, man, that's gonna be flashbacks of the Drake game. Like we don't <laughs> have turf. It's gonna be a sloppy, but it was like forty five degrees and sunny and it was a beautiful day and we absolutely obliterated him. So hopefully we can do at least half of that on against West Virginia. So uh yeah. Yeah, it's a tough place to, uh, for the team to get to. I think they have to fly into Pittsburgh and then drive down. Yeah, it's kinda like Waco with Dallas to Waco. Yeah, what do I envision every time you, you don't you're too young to remember the Beverly Hillbillies, but for some reason I just envision that old pickup with all those people on top of, uh, in the uh, in the old pickup on Beverly Hillbillies when I think of West Virginia. I don't know why, but I have no idea what that is. Yeah, that's right. Some of the older guys will remember. You can look it up when you get when we're done. Yeah, I think I I listened to tried to troll the West Virginia a little bit and uh, not a lot of positivity. In Morgantown right now. I mean, they just sound like they're like, really excited about their team. They can't really, they can't decide if they're good or bad because them almost beating Oklahoma at Oklahoma. And surely Spencer Rattler gets was struggling as the I think it was the week before Caleb Williams came in there and kind of, but we thought turned around Oklahoma and Oklahoma damn near loses at Kansas. Yeah, Oklahoma is another. That's a podcast on its own. I mean, so man, like, they're a roller coaster. Right what now. I like about us. Playing Oakley State pretty well. We there was really bad spots both ways, but we we beat them. We came out and beat them, and uh, and it's just it's nice for us to like we're picking up momentum. It's for October. We all know like a cliche thing, and be nice to it's the last for October to actually finish it off with the with another victory against West Virginia. And actually, I was looking back. This was like the game last time we played there was when Brees Hall came. Right about and that yeah. was, that's when this, that was his first big the first game he got the most carries they had one yeah. carry of the game before yeah and uh, it'd be like that was his Okie State uh, Brock Brock versus Okie State came in and just just absolutely was fantastic and we're like man we got another running back yeah we we're all worried about Dave Montgomery leaving and yeah that's the true freshman and skinny kid came out and. Absolutely ran all over West Virginia's defense. So, and he is not skinny anymore. No. I mean, I saw your post that you put on Twitter about a picture of Bre- uh, Brees, and it doesn't even look like the same person. Yeah, he's I mean, he's, he's still, a, he's still so got the thick. He still's got the breakaway speed, but yeah, Dave yeah. Andrews and they, he's gone to work in the gym, and he's still as good as advertised. Okie State had a really good defense last week, and uh, I think Brees will probably break through a lot more this week against West Virginia, but. West Virginia supposedly has a good run defense too, but we hear that a lot. Like Kansas State was supposed to have a good run defense, and it took about Brees half a play to run all the way to the house. So hopefully, that like have one one of those plays in the first drives where we just shut up the crowd and like, oh man, we got playing against a NFL running back this week, and and Brock Purdy's playing like an NFL quarterback too, and so is Char- Charlie Kohler's playing like a tight end. That should be in the league already. So, yeah, it's we're we're peaking at the right time, I think, and it's just fun to watch. It's fun. It's not C- Campbell likes to win in his, like very slow, boring ways. Like Iowa State fans wants to be like throwing 
left and right, but we're just, uh, yeah, we're winning in exactly how Matt Campbell wants to win, and uh, I'm here for it. Yeah, he does. Campbell likes to win in those boring ways. However, he doesn't recruit players that like to win in boring ways. Yeah. I mean, we have explosive guys, too, which, you know, Xavier showed that last week. Bree showed it against, many times Kansas, against Kansas State. Um, Brock is Brock, you know, shows that. So these are not your – wideouts that are running a four nine forty because we and we have to grind it out because we can't we don't have any speed. We have plenty of speed mm -hmm. and we've got a guys that are explosive. It's just when we get in the position where we know we can grind it out, Matt likes to likes yeah. to grind it out. Like so. last last week was the Xavier game where he just what? Is that off for a reason? Oh it's whatever. Okay. Um yeah, Xavier he's like kind of peaking like kind of a like, like oh sure like Last year he was the first team all Big Twelve, but like basically they gave well, he played had a great year last year. What I'm saying, but he's playing even better than last year. He's one of the players where we're like we saw his ceiling and we're seeing it because his route running is way better. Purdy's throwing right to him, like still like giving the chance to catch it and like he's actually catching. And I like the Iowa game where he dropped a couple balls, but now he's like man, he's we got to appreciate. Purdy, we got to appreciate Xavier Hutchinson now because he's like I thought Xavier would be one of the players where he could take his uh, COVID year and come back next year, but the way he's playing right now, he might be playing on Sundays. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's a, you know, there's a lot of freak athletes in the in the league at the, at that size, so you know, it's going to be a bit, it's going to be a tough decision for him. It, we got a lot of football left ahead of yeah. us before he makes that decision, but you know, I if you watch the game <clears throat> Saturday. We're, we're running a little like it's not even a bubble screen, I guess you could say, but he was one or two steps away from breaking a couple plays that we run for him. So he's that he's an explosive guy. Um, I just don't know where he matches up NFL speed wise, but you know I don't really care at this point. Well, we I mean, said he, the same thing about Alan Lazard, like right. But well, that, we knew we didn't we knew Allen wasn't Allen was not you know they didn't have the breakaway speed because they you know when they put him in the league they tried to make him a tight end yeah obviously he proved him wrong with that he's also but what got Allen on the field is first of all Aaron Rodgers really liked him because he would catch the ball and he also was a really good blocker yeah let's so which the NFL has got like they've gone from tight ends to just be receivers and now the receivers are being like taking the tight right. end blocking and that's yeah. it was a perfect fit for perfect scenario for Allen Lazard to Come in that that time, the NFL, and also yeah. he's very good receiving too. Like, and he also works really hard. Yeah. He's got the Iowa work ethic. I mean, he is you know really he's really made a name for himself and making himself a nice little living too. Yeah. yeah. Other than his situation with COVID, which we won't get into because I thought that was kind of silly, but I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, I'll explain it. This will be. It's not like I'm not really having a huge opinion on him. This isn't. This isn't a. Tucker Carlson or anything, but like, <laughs> I hope not. Well, well like we're gonna lose a lot of listeners. So fast. like, uh, Devonta Adams, who's vaccinated, tested positive, but oh. since and Alan Lazard's not vaccinated and tested negative, but still, since he was in the same room as a positive person, he can't play on Sunday. But, Contact tracing. Yeah, but he, even though he tested negative, and since he tested negative and he's not vaccinated, he doesn't get paid. But Devonta Adams, who tests positive, gets paid. So Allen's not vaccinated. No, no, doesn't get paid because he's not vaccinated. Oh my god! He doesn't, I, I, doesn't I, have I didn't it. want to talk about it because Do, we're going to go down the wrong rabbit hole. The only I, reason, I'm going to have to start my own podcast to give you my opinion about this. The only reason I brought that up is because we're talking about Alan Lazard, and yeah, I saw that well, today. So talking about West Virginia, I mean they're they're running two quarterbacks right now. Um, their first quarterback is Daigie, who um, West Virginia is self describing as he's really good when he's in the pocket and has time. Well. We have a guy named Will McDonald that is going yeah. to probably make you move and a little bit. Jerry so, Singleton's back too. Which Jerry, is yeah, he's listed as number one on the depth chart again. So, um, Mr. Daggy might have a hard time standing in the pocket. I'm hoping because uh, their offensive line is a little suspect as well. Their their running backs are getting hit. Point two yards past the line of scrimmage is the average of when they're getting hit when they get the ball. So, um, I think. Um, J.R. Singleton's going to have fun. I think Will's going to have fun. Isaiah I'm hoping Lee. Uh, Isaiah Lee. I hope Mike Rose is healthy. Uh, regardless of that, we've got enough depth in the linebackers. I'm really not concerned about that. So if you look at their stats, Daggy has eight touchdowns and five interceptions. Not exactly a great ratio. Their other quarterback 
is Garrett Green, who is a run-first quarterback, and their coach has said the reason he's not starting is that he calls his own number too much. Oh, yeah. In other words, he doesn't hand the ball off on a read and will keep it and try to run. He did have a 70-some-odd run running. Um, he has a couple of long runs from scrimmage. One of them was against who they play, Baylor. Did they yeah, play last? They all, yeah, Baylor. Yeah, Baylor. Yes, lost. and so um, – but – this is the stat that jumped out for Garrett Green to me. No passing touchdowns, no interceptions. Just couple, so couple we're obviously touchdowns. we're yeah. gonna he's not you know obviously not the second coming of Brock Purdy, but he only has one sack, and Daggy has fifteen. Yeah, because so it's gonna year, be a, last year. Will McDonald got to him like two or three times, and it was kind of get ridiculous at some point. And it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be interesting how they try to figure that out. Yeah, it's just going to be one of those games. I think it'll either be like we're b- way better than them and we just destroy them, or it'll be the Baylor thing. Like, oh, they're better than we thought, and uh, yeah, we'll just be interesting to see. But we're not like they almost beat Oklahoma, yes, but they're also like Oklahoma is very like based on how good their quarterback's playing. That's how good they play. And their defense, Oklahoma's defense, is not very good. And uh, obviously, they almost lost to Kansas for crying out loud, who we obliterated. And yeah. it'll be nice to see if if we can get up a couple scores. I know like Campbell doesn't really like resting players, but like getting Anthony Johnson some rest, and get the young Mike guy Rose rest. Yeah, give the young guys some rest. But, too. Like I say that, but I like Mike Rose is still playing against Kansas when we we're up like forty five. Yeah, it wasn't he like, wasn't dinged up though? I mean, I think. Campbell, you know, at his press conference this week said it was nerve related, you know, so did he get a stinger? Yeah, but, um, which Campbell is really, I don't think that's what it was personally. Which Campbell but, does really well with like players who Oh, are, he's a spin doctor. With yeah. the <laughs> like players that were like looking forward to like the future. Like look at the Purdy's first game, Dave Montgomery was hurt and didn't play at all. Yeah. And we were like still like 2 and 3, we're like what are we as good as what was last year a fluke? Were we not very good? And then Brock Purdy comes in and. Well, but but I when I was talking about Campbell, I mean he's he is really good at, at giving us a lot of, a lot of uh, smoke and no fire. I mean yeah. he he uh, doesn't tell us exactly what's going on. So you know everything that I'm going by is per, from personally having a shoulder injury playing football and watching what happened to Mike on those two plays in the first quarter and then watching what they were t- why they took him out. So. Um, if he plays, this is my opinion. If he plays on Saturday at all, it's not as bad as what it possibly could be. Yeah. If he is out, that means the shoulder thing is more than what. What was worries? What worries me is it was like the whole game last week. It wasn't just like one play, one time where he got hurt. It was kind of like lingering the whole game, but he's right. still going out there because Mike Rose is a warrior, and we really yeah. needed him. But hopefully we don't need them as much as we did last week yeah. in this game. Well, West Virginia, I know, talking, getting back to West Virginia a little bit, but they are, their secondary is not good. Really? Um, they brought in a, a transfer from Illinois State who was an all-FBS player, Charles Woods, um, who is I think is going to get a bigger role now. Um, but, yeah, I don't think uh, – they brought they have some super seniors back there that they thought were going to be really good, but they're really struggling right now, I think. So – if they've got a if they've got a secondary that's struggling, and they've got an offensive line that's struggling, you know, then it's going to come down to their defensive line is pretty good. Well, how our offensive line does against them, because I think they've got some super seniors on the defensive line, and so like they like you always say, it's going to be one in the trenches. It's going to be how well our offensive line plays, which I think Hufford and all those guys are playing really well right now. Um, for the most part, I think you know we're going to possibly be able to get a few more creases than we did against Oklahoma State. Because Eric Heft, I heard him interviewed this week, and Eric Heft talked to some Oklahoma State people, and they said that's the best Oklahoma State is Oklahoma State has played all year on set last Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, they, they, yeah, like they had two crazy throws. Yeah, but I mean, they, overall, they said yeah. that's the best they, they've played. Their I defense, mean, they held like Brees had a couple of big runs, but they really held Brees to not one of those not his worst games, but like. Production wise, wasn't the best one. But yeah, when you don't have a hole to run, you I mean yeah, it's, it's not. It's do. not. You know, not everybody's David Montgomery where they can get a hit twenty times. He, yeah. I mean, not. I mean, so anyway, I mean, I, I think, I think matchup wise, it's probably pretty good. I mean, we can't let their running quarterback escape, which I don't think we will. Um, Mevis still needs to be Mevis. We need to 
be, you know, he needs to, you know, when you're on the road, you need your special teams to be excellent, and we need to make sure his punting is excellent. Yeah. Hopefully we don't punt, but, he, you know, that but, punting thing is yeah. a huge – I mean, we were talking, I showed you – I sent you that video yeah. on Twitter of the guy that had an 80-yard punt standing on the back of the end zone, and it lands on the opposite 18-yard line. Yeah. That is a weapon. Nevis' second or third punt was a 60-yarder. Yeah, right? I mean, almost, if he can get consistent with that, I mean – yeah, we almost stormed the field then. So we need to have a little lottery. You know, uh, Will McDonald needs one more sack to uh, um, break, to, to break uh, Bailey's Bailey's record. So how long is that going to take this weekend? Is it going to be the first quarter, first half, whatever? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be the first play on West Virginia. Or, but yeah. yeah, so West Virginia also said that they have scored on six of their seven first, first possessions this really? year. So that's going to be one thing to watch is that if we can if we get a three and out to start off, that's not going to be good news for them. But yeah, I mean, I was doing. I mean, I'm a numbers guy. I was just going through some of the numbers um, today just for the fun of it. And you know, we're uh, we're third in total defense nationally. We're fifth in the number of first downs we've given up. We're seventh in passing defense. Um, you know, those are some fantastic numbers. I mean, we are and we are ranked tenth nationally in the fewest amount of penalties. So, you know, I think we're playing pretty darn well right now. I mean, yeah, and, we are. and we just have, I mean, it's just, we can't get, if we don't give up the big mistakes like fumbles or pick sixes and yeah. block field goals, you know, it's been that way the whole time Campbell's been here. Whenever yeah. we don't make mistakes and make, you don't give up huge plays. We usually win. Yeah. Don't, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Like we're yeah. playing a, a playoff contender in Oklahoma or we're playing against we barely beat you and I, but like we just yeah. we won that way. It's not like we're gonna play Kansas every week and beat them by forty five like Bama does to every, every conference team. It's gonna be it's gonna be a close game for most of the game, and we'll either break away or barely like we'll win, but in a Campbell way of like going by three or seven. But yeah, it's uh, the one might make my main concern is how healthy Anthony Johnson is because. Anthony Johnson is not like Mike Rose where there's way much – way, like, depth of, like, cornerbacks that have been, like, very, very good behind him. Like yeah, we got some young guys. Well, we got right? young guys, yeah. but they just don't have the – They don't have the experience. They don't have the yeah. reps because yeah. TJ Tampa is going to be a replacement for uh, – he's been the starting second uh, opposite side of Anthony Johnson, but he's just like any other freshman. He kind of just – He's still trying to figure it out. And there's yeah. Big Twelve receivers are good as hell too, and it's just it's just well, a and and uh, T.J. Tampa came in like as an athlete. We didn't know if he's gonna be a receiver or cornerback. We put him at cornerback, and he he's got the ceiling. And my question is, do we place like we do play Miles Purchase out there, or like these stud really really talented freshmen that are already playing on special teams? But if we might come down to our cornerbacks if anthony johnson's hurt and we have two of our other guys out there and i just hope they are up for the task and su- succeed and if they do we should win pretty com- comfortably yeah i mean amos and kamani king have shown that they're very capable i mean kamani king is hard to no. pick off a pass with with craig, one hand craig mm-hmm. mcdonald craig safety. mcdonald's playing really well yeah so i mean yeah i mean i think i i'm not you know is there real besides I I can't think I honestly can't think of a single position where if that person goes down and he's done for the year we're in big trouble. Probably just Anthony Johnson. It's the only one. Maybe that's the only one maybe. that I can think of. Well, maybe I mean, Will McDonald. We too. have a healthy Greg Eisworth. Yeah, I healthy, mean Anna Shim Young. Yeah, like, we have dudes too, but it's just the, that cornerback has been always the one where like it gets picked on most. Yeah, but yeah, we. Which well, I don't think will be issued in the future with TJ Tampa and Miles Purchase being freshmen and they're going to grow into being All American type cor- cornerbacks. But mm-hmm. yeah, just that's my really only concern. in This game is obviously special teams is was really good against Oki State, but it's, it hasn't been consistent for since Kirby Vandekamp has been here. So well, I mean they've got six total passing touchdowns. Yeah. So and they're we're cor- not going against Tom Brady. Yeah. Let's so. just let's just hope not, and uh, let's just get the cycling victory. It's gonna be a beautiful. But Morgantown, I heard, is beautiful, and I'll. The thing for some reason, I, when I was a when I was a kid, my aunt lived in Morgantown. She taught at West Virginia, and I remember it was just a my and I was really young. Um, I just remember a lot of the um, history around that area because it's such an older 
state than Iowa is. And there was glass blowing, you know, where they were making glass out of, you know, the way they used to make it. And, and, um, it was and there was a lot of history there too, in that whole area. So, um, it was, it's, I think it's that I haven't taken you guys there to enough to appreciate the history of the revolutionary war in that area. Um, enough. So I'm hoping you get to see that a little bit because it's a um, part of the country that I haven't been at for years. But you know, when you look at the the towns that <clears throat> the when the years they were established in Iowa versus the years they were established out there, yeah. I mean, like a lot of the towns around here were established in what the 1850s, mm-hmm. and some of those were established in the 1650s. I mean, yeah. so um, there's yeah, it should be fun. I mean, I'm kind of jealous of you going. I'm not jealous of you riding in the car for that long. Trust yeah. me, but. Um, I'm hoping the weather cooperates and you come home with a, with a W should be fun. You got to have talk trash. I hate to bring this up, but it was the last time I went that direction. It was for the UAB game, the UAB game in Kentucky and the, the, that, I mean that more the direct direction was the Aaron craft game. Yeah. Dayton, Ohio. That's the last time. I hope it's, it probably like, no matter what happens, this game won't be as half as crappy as that was because yeah, that was brutal. That was I don't it was fun. It was a, it was a good time. I mean, but I mean, I don't really ever want to go back to Dayton, Ohio again. But it was, uh, you know, a couple of really good teams, and that was that was a fun trip. Regardless, I mean, you, you, we had me and you and your your brothers all went and had to drive home in a blizzard. Yeah, we but, can, we might do a podcast on that. Oh, we had a lot of season. basketball to talk about eventually. Yeah, so in the off season, but yeah, what's yeah. your what do you think score predictions? I know yeah. we're never right with this, but. I was pretty. I was decently close for Kansas State, wasn't I? I mean, I, I thought know. I said like thirty four twenty four. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even remember us doing one for Oklahoma State. And yeah, let's just. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's going to be a shot in the dark. I mean, I think we can put up thirty on these guys. Thirty to what? Thirty to ten. I'm going to go way out on a limb. All right. What are you going to say? Um, let's just say. I don't know because. Brock is just on fire right now. Yeah, I know. Brock I is mean, on fire. Right. And Brees really, like he played really, like he played had big moments when he, we needed him. But I don't know if he can, if he can have a couple of breakout touchdowns, it could get uh, and, get ugly fast. And but. especially if their quarterback has been getting mauled, especially when we have the best pass rusher in the nation. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be depend on if Purdy continues to. Be solid and complete this completion percentage is like 80 to 85 percent in the last couple of games, which is absolutely ridiculous. And uh, so I'll just say, well, yeah, just 28 to six. Boy, if either one of if we're evil, either one of those are right, it's going to be a pretty low stress, low stress game. But yeah, we, yeah, so yeah, and there's other games around the league. Uh, Texas versus Baylor is a huge one for us. We need, I, don't, I think we need Baylor to. Get beat by Texas. It's at at Baylor. Texas has already lost a couple, and they're just gonna. Who's Oklahoma got? Oklahoma. I'm not sure. Yeah, I looked sure. it up earlier today. I don't remember. It's not. Yeah, I don't know. So Texas. Hopefully, they'll take care of business. I know Sam Sleese is gonna get tickets in the same <laughs> row as us. So oh boy! I know he won't be as obnoxious. That's as your them. that's your cousin that is a that was born in Texas that is a Texas fan. That will be interesting. Uh, he won't be as obnoxious as the Iowa fan that sat by us. So. No, he there. That would that's a they go, uh, Texas is at Baylor. Oklahoma is at home against Texas Tech. Yeah, with their new coach. Yeah. Or new Kansas goes. Uh, Kansas is at Oklahoma. So yeah, State. if you're a Tex, if you're a Texas Tech player, right, you're on <laughs> Sunday. You're uh you that's when you usually like review what happened on Saturday and then you're getting you wake up on Monday you're getting ready for Oklahoma and then your head coach is just fired. Yeah, that's uh. What per- is Texas? I mean, I, I I don't follow Texas Tech close enough. They're I mean, five and three. They haven't made a bowl game in like five to six years, but they're only one game away. But like their last five, the last four games is against ranked opponents. Yeah. So. What about Iowa being a three and a half point favorite at, at Wisconsin? Their favorite? Iowa's favorite by three and a half. That game might be two to zero. Though. Yeah. There's no offense. Yeah. Cincinnati's a 20, 26 point favorite. Good Lord. They're going to be, they're going to be fun to add to yeah. the big 12, man. That's going to be a Especially lot of fun. for West Virginia. I was looking that way. It's like, they'll finally have a road game. They don't have to drive or fly to. Right. So, yeah, I, that's will be, I'll be interesting to ask some West Virginia fans. 
how they like to be in the Big 12 for the last couple of years because if you like traveling to games, there you have to just fly everywhere, which yeah. would be pretty frustrating. So if you if you had money, would you put it on the Kansas-Oklahoma State game? The spread is 31. Oklahoma State is going to relieve some sp- – some stress this weekend, I'm afraid, on Kansas. I don't know. Maybe Kansas has turned a new I tide. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think it's a bad time to be playing, that, playing Oklahoma State. I don't know if they storm the field based on a close loss <laughs> to Oklahoma. They, that would be funny if a team storms the field after a, a loss. loss. That was, oh, my God. The, 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 players are, the home players are probably tackling. Because they were 42-point underdogs, yeah, and they no. almost won. So, yeah. Well, I don't know, but almost won. They were in. They were in at halftime, and they te- emailed about everyone in the state of Kansas to come to the game, begging them to come to the game. Yeah, which I'm just so glad that our fan base, even when we were bad, we showed up. Like we didn't quit, and it's just we're paying, paying off. It's paying off now because like last week with the Okie State game, that was so fun, and uh, hopefully we get get a lot of those in the future with Campbell. And uh, yeah, so yeah. that's about all we got. Yeah, well, have a safe drive. And we got to promote our guys again. I tell you what, Grandview Beef uh, emailed me again this week. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but beef has gotten really expensive at the store. And they are not going to raise their prices okay. because they are in control of their stock. I mean, they're raising it. It is a farm-to-table group. So go support our friends at grandviewbeef.com. Um, make an order with them. Put in 10 beef sticks into your cart. Use the Sound the Sirens promo code STC. And you'll get those um, beef sticks for free. It's a great product. I just ordered another half um, that's going to be delivered to my door in May. Um, it's a and you know we've always got plenty, plenty of their product in our in our uh, in our freezer, and they're just really good people. I like supporting companies that are really good people, and we will never ever promote somebody that we do not use personally. Um, so that's why I'm a big fan of Grandview Beef, a big fan of ChewWorks.com. Just got a new set of chews in for our dog um, this week. She loves them. She begs us for them every night. Um, and so if you've got a dog that likes to chew up stuff and you're concerned about them getting quality products, go to ChewWorks.com and use the promo code Sound the Sirens. Either place, you make an order here in the next week, we're going to give you a free shirt. Well, um, I've talked to both of them, and they're going to tell us when an order comes through, and we will uh, send you a free Sound the Sirens shirt. So. All right. Well, hopefully we take care of business. It's a happy podcast. Uh, and you get home victory. in one piece. Yep. So, yeah. yep. Go Cyclones. Go Cyclones.